Hello everyone. Welcome to the first class of Linux and Electronics at Raspberry Pi course. My name is Pablo Jarso, and this is the first class of the Linux and Electronics course uh, given to you thanks to Hackadayu. And this is gonna be a really fun class. Um, we're gonna see many things about the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna see how you're gonna step up your uh, Raspberry Pi game. Uh, if you come from a background of Arduinos or any other microcontrollers and you want to use something more powerful, this is the right course for you, okay? So let's do it. Okay, so in this first class, we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi basics. What is a Raspberry Pi? Is In short words, it's the most famous single board computer. Um, a Raspberry Pi is a single board computer, computer as, I, as I said. Uh, what that means, it's, it means that, for example, a PC computer or a tower computer or a desktop computer as we know it is usually in a box, which is composed by the motherboard, the RAM, the processor, maybe a GPU, a hard drive, etc. And all those components are separate from each other and you, can, and you can modify the computer. A single board computer means that every part that I just mentioned is together, it's assembled together and you cannot take them apart. It's also a credit card size, which means it's really, really small, which is the one of the favorite features from the Raspberry Pi. It's open source, of course, which is really, really good. It means that you can, ideally, if you have the means, you can just replicate the Raspberry Pi and, 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 or modify it, make it better, etc. It's also a great learning platform, which means that once you take um, into the Raspberry Pi world, you're going to see there are lots, lots of people in it. You're gonna see many resources. And there's a lot of single board computers out there, but there are not many. Um, but there are not that many uh, as famous and as um, people backed, or 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 so many people use it that it's there are so many resources. So yeah, this is, this is one of the reasons if I want to do a long-term project with the Raspberry Pi I, uh, or with a single board computer, I mean, I usually take the Raspberry Pi. This is the difference between um, how does it compare between a PC and Arduino. An Arduino is a microcontroller, which means it's just a single chip which you make a program for it and then and, and, the, and the microcontroller is just gonna make the program run. It's gonna follow each instruction and it's just only gonna do that. A Raspberry Pi is a computer which has an operating system that has many programs running in the background. A PC computer is the same as a Raspberry Pi, but it's more powerful, more, you can change parts, it doesn't have access to the GPIO, etc. So the thing about the Raspberry Pi, which sits between the Arduino and the PC, is that you can take the Raspberry Pi and it has GPIOs in it. If you want to put GPIOs on the PC, you can have them. It's not as easy as in the Raspberry Pi. And obviously, it's not that, it's not that uh, small either. So this is why the Raspberry Pi it sits between a PC project and an Arduino project. So what are the specs, right? What we're seeing here is the Raspberry Pi 4. The one that we, we, we ask you to, to buy for this course is the Raspberry Pi 3B. You could have also buy, uh, bought this one and it would have been fine. But I, I wanted to go with the 3B because it, has, it, it, it already has many years out and it has been proven to be a really good product. So here, as you can see, uh, first the power supply comes from a, US, a USB-C port. This is for the Raspberry Pi 4. The, Ras the Raspberry Pi 3 has a micro USB one. Um, here is where usually is the, the processor is. 
this looks maybe looks different uh, different in yours in your Raspberry Pi 3 it maybe look like this chip um, here in the Raspberry Pi 4 you can choose the RAM there there are many there are three models that you can choose from and you can have uh, different amounts of RAM here this uh, system of a chip on, on a chip that you can see here is is called is is the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip. It comes shielded, so it doesn't have interference um, from the outside. These are two micro HDMI ports. Uh, the 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 Raspberry Three. This is another reason why I want you, wanted you to uh, to buy the Raspberry Pi Three, is because the micro HDMI ports are are kind of rare. So I wanted you to to buy the full HDMI port for the Raspberry Pi. Here is a port is a port for another kind of display, and here is the port for for, for the Raspberry Pi camera. Here is a jack for audio, USB 2, USB 3, and a gigabit ethernet. Um, in the Raspberry Pi 3 that you have, it's also the same, but, but no USB 3. So 12,500 is the amount of Raspberry Pi that have been sold since 2012 where it was born that's a lot that's a lot of raspberry pis out there this is why i like about it there are so many out people are using it making products making projects and they all share their their, their experiences in the internet so here are a couple of modules um a raspberry pi uh, 4b is the one that we just saw this is a Raspberry Pi model uh, three model B. This is the one that I ask you, uh, we asked you to buy. A Raspberry Pi zero W and Raspberry Pi zero. So as you can see, this is a different form factor. This is um, uh, kind of if if you, uh, the size of the Raspberry Pi three if you split it right in the middle. The Raspberry Pi Zero is a lot cheaper. It's a lot less powerful, but it's a lot less. Um, uh, it's, it's a lot less smaller. It's way smaller, I should say. Um, as you can see here, you have a couple of things from from the other uh, from the bigger Raspberry Pi. Here you have a, uh, I, what I believe is a mini HDMI, uh, two micro uh, USB ports, the processor. And the, and the micro SD port. And, and I don't know if this is the uh, display port or the camera port, most likely the camera one. So the difference between the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the Zero is that the Zero W is wireless, so you can connect through Wi-Fi with it. This one, the Raspberry Pi Zero, it doesn't. It doesn't have any any kind of wireless connection. So everything should you should you should be able if you want to talk to it, you you're gonna be um, talking through the USB cable. This is another kind of module. This is for industrial um, computing. Uh, this is where you want um, something that you can take off and on. These modules come, um, it's the third generation, so it's, it's along with the Raspberry Pi 3B. They, they come in sizes uh, like RAM, and you, can, and you can buy module kits, or you just make, you can make just on, your own board and put them in and take them out as you wish. So Raspberry Pi has something called hats. Um, they were introduced in 2014, and they they are um, some a, a standard that the the Raspberry Pi Foundation made. So you can, if you ever do a project, you can have the same pinout between the between um, Raspberry Pis. Um, it's it's the same one since, since uh, I I believe since the beginning, and. And you can and you and whatever hat was made from for the Raspberry Pi, let's say one or two, is gonna work for the 
three or a four. So these are the pinouts that you're gonna find in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, they don't change a lot between them because that's, that's uh, they try to keep these standard. You're gonna see a couple of, for example, five volts uh, pins, 3.3 volts, a uh, ground pin, a couple of them actually. You're also gonna see a lot of GPIOs with also double as um, serial buses. For example, I square C, these are the two bosses for it. Um, serial, serial ports and, and more. Uh, there's also PWMs and, 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 and more ports. We're gonna talk about them more in the next class. So this is what a um, Raspberry Pi hat looked like. This is one type of it someone decided to make a hat with LEDs addressable. As you can see, it, it sits on top of the Raspberry Pi and it makes a, an animation. Uh, th that could have just been a program made into it or something that happened once uh, one condition happened, for example, if you got an email or something like that. This is the primary unicorn hat. Uh, you can find it if you want it, but this is really cool. This is another example. I don't know if you can notice, but this is a hat for the Raspberry Pi Zero. It could have been also the W, but the, uh, it, it's, it's compatible still, um, compatible. And this also could have went into the Raspberry Pi 3, but, it's, but the thing is, it's not going, it was not going to be as um, comfortable as a joystick for it. So this is really cool. This is just someone made this to make a, a full, um, a full um, video game out of a Raspberry Pi Zero in a controller and, and in a, and a Raspberry Pi uh, Zero hat. Okay, so at first when I saw this, uh, it, 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 was, uh, it kind of blew my mind because it's really, really, really small. Um, as you can see, it's, this is a, 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 an arcade cabinet made with a couple of PCBs um, or uh, perforate PCBs. So they solder a couple of um, buttons and a joystick or a mini joystick, a, a, a LCD screen, and they connect and they connected everything to a Raspberry Pi Zero. This is another kind of project, and this is the project that you usually see when you are working with um, um, with uh, people that come from a Linux background. They usually make something called cluster, which means that you put a couple of computing computing power, which c can be um, processors, uh, GPUs, etc. You can put a couple of uh, uh, Raspberry Pis and make a cluster out of it. So here, the Raspberry Pi 3 is working as a, the, like the host and they made a hat so you can fit a couple of Raspberry Pi zeros on top of it to make a cluster. So this is the cluster hat uh, 2.5 by Pimeroni, if you wanna find more about it. So here, what is Linux, right? This is a uh, Linux and electronic course, so we're gonna explain what Linux is. Linux, in basic words, are an open source operating system. It's an operating system, same, same as um, Windows and, and, and the operating system from, uh, from Mac, which uh, the name I just forgot. Uh, wait a second. So Linux is an operating system. Um, same as Windows and Mac OS, um, and it's open source. This is something that the other ones doesn't, doesn't have. Uh, they come packaged into many distributions, so types of, like there's, imagine there were kinds of Windows, they, they, they come uh, a couple of Linux uh, distributions. Uh, the, um, the most, a couple of the most um, famous ones, are Ubuntu, Debian, 
Raspberry Pi OS and and more. They are really, really, Linux is really, really pop popular for servers and IoT because it's open source, easy to work with, and the, the, um, the operating system is very uh, secure and reliable um, center. It, it, it was made to be reliable and to be um, easy to use for big and complicated purposes. This is what we know as a Linux console or terminal. This is where you're gonna interact with the operating system and this is what we're gonna use in the next classes to do commands, talk um, to, the, to, the, to the computer, make programs, etc. I know this, this looks really, really um, complicated, but it's, it is really not. So in this diagram, I'm showing you the, 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 the connections between shell and kernel and the hardware and the user. So the shell, the shell is a program that interprets the commands that you, that you, yeah, that you typed in as a user. Send that information to the kernel, which is the part of the operating system that talks to the hardware. So let's say drivers, um, let's say a special programs that, that, that only the hardware can, can um, a special uh, programs to talk to the hardware. This is basically the kernel. And the shell is, there are many types of shells, but like um, shells are usually the program that accepts the commands, okay? So, this is a step down for, for how it goes from application to hardware. So you use an application, uh, you open a Chrome, Spotify, or you on your terminal, you do a CD or MV to move. And you do, if you do those commands, or if you run those programs, they usually gonna run on a shell. They're gonna run on a terminal. And they're gonna run, uh, for example, um, sh, chsh, or bash are three examples of shell. These are the most famous ones. Okay, so um, then then the shell is gonna talk to the kernel, and then the kernel, as we said, is gonna talk to the hardware. So, what is electronics? Electronics is one of the coolest, in my opinion, is one of the coolest branch of physics. Electronics is um, the field that study the flows, the flow of electrons within semi with the semiconductors. So, te technically, when you're uh, switching a, a a a a light in your house on and off, you're you're um, Controlling the flow of electrons, but it's not with it's not small. It's not that that current is not uh, small. It's, you're not doing it with semiconductors. So, what I the analogy that I like to use, for example, for electronics, is that um, elect, elect, the difference between electronics and electrical or electricity is that electrical uh, usually works with things that are more power and bigger. Electronics is, is where when you want to, uh, where, where you deal with smaller stuff and more delicate stuff. In, 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 in practice, the difference usually comes with what are you using? For example, in electronics, we mostly use transistors or microcontrollers to do our controlling. In, ele in electricity, we what you use, um, Relays, um, controls, PLC, whatever things are big and, and robust to, to take those currents. Um, electronics are, or things that are also used in the electronics field are uh, microcontrollers, ASICs, and FPGAs. ASIC is, a, is an application of it, and you can find that out, but it's like a little bit advanced. I just wanted to say that. And FPGAs are like the next step. Is 
is when you when you when you get like, to the limits of the microcontroller where the microcontroller cannot run fast enough for you to do something, then you need to an FPGA. An FPGA is the closest thing as maker that we have to make our own um, um, chip or make our own um, uh, integrated circuit. That's, that's the best way I can put it. So this is a PCB from uh, 1966. This is what electronic electronics look like. Um, this, as you can see, it has many, many integrated circuits in, on top of a PCB, switches, uh, capacitors, and uh, some resistors over here, more capacitors. And yeah. So the difference between this MacBook Pro logic board from the 2010 and this, it's basically that first of all, we advance at a point that integrated circuits are way smaller. So mostly everything that is here, you can just replace it with a couple of chips like this one and this one and yeah. So we have more, more populated, uh, the PCB is more populated than this one because we're being more efficient. As you can see, these are like the cables on top of the PCB. PCB means printed circuit board. So it's, it would be like instead of cables, it would be like the cable would be drawn on top of the PCB. Imagine the PCB being like a, 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 a top um, sheet of plastic and it, had, and it has copper on top and at the bottom. And the cables are drawn on top and, 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 and down to it, okay? Here, we have the same, but we don't have as many layers. What I just described to you, that is goes on top and the bottom are layers. This board has many layers, probably more than 10. And yeah, so here are you, as, as you can see, we are, this board is completely populated with stuff. So this means that we're just being way more efficient. So let's talk about li a little bit about the Raspberry Pi OS. Previously known, previously known as Raspbian. So I just noticed that um, they just changed the name from Raspbian to um, Raspberry Pi OS, which is um, an okay um, change. So yeah, so just be, be, uh, be mindful when you find, uh, when you want to look for um, help on the internet. If you want something that it, you, you can see is a problem that could be really old, you may, you may be uh, needing to put Raspbian on your query on Google. So this is the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. This is what it looks like when you go, when you go inside of it. It looks like a typical desktop, but a few changes, right? Here's the, the hour, the, um, the volume control, Wi-Fi status, Bluetooth status. Um, here's for the USB. Um, I believe this is the uh, amount of percent that the CPU is using. So here are the, the, the main menu. Here you can see, here's where you shut down the, the, the Raspberry Pi um, or, or reboot it. This is where you run commands, preferences for the Raspberry Pi OS system. Uh, and in, in here, our programs are just packed into different categories. Yeah. So the difference between the Raspberry Pi OS um, desktop and the minimal version that we're gonna see a, a little bit later, but I just wanted to explain this to you, is that the minimal doesn't have any desktop, doesn't have any uh, GUI, which means graphical user interface. Uh, basically GUI is what, whenever you, you can move the mouse or use the keyboard, it's a, a, a to, to change stuff or basically the mouse um, is, is a GUI. Here on the Raspberry Pi Minimal, you cannot like you cannot use the mouse. 
you may be using it, but not directly. So we here we mostly use the keyboard. So we type anything that we want. And this is better for some applications because GUI um, takes uh, many resources to put pixels by pixels um, in each frame. It takes a lot of power. So whenever you want to do something that is not um, that you want to the, the most um, the most out of the Raspberry Pi, you should go through to minimal. I usually use minimal. Um, for example, you cannot do um, computer uh, vision applications with the Raspberry Pi OS minimal. You need to use the Raspberry Pi um, uh, desktop for that because it's not going to allow you even to download or um, install some programs. Um, so yeah, so to have that in mind. So if you go to the Raspberry Pi downloads um, page of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, you're going to see uh, two types of um, Raspberry Pi OS um, options. You're going you're gonna to choose the uh, Raspberry Pi OS previously uh, called Raspbian and choose that one. And then you're gonna see a couple of third-party operating system images. It's, it, this, this, you're gonna see it below this. So this mean, these are a couple of um, images or let's say, you can, you can maybe call them distributions um, for the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, um, there are uh, versions of Ubuntu, Ubuntu main core and server for the Raspberry Pi. These are another kinds of um, uh, Raspberry Pi images for the Raspberry Pi. I haven't um, tested them all. Um, so yeah, if you, whenever you wanna do an, an Internet of Things applications, you may, be, you may want to look for, for these images uh, before downloading them and trying them out. So again, we're gonna touch the Raspberry Pi OS one. And then we're gonna see three options, okay? So let me explain these three options for you. So on top of it, both of them are the desktop version, okay? The, the, the bottom one is the Debian, the, the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. If you can see, there's a, a, a big uh, difference in sizes. For example, here, the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, just where it's only, um, size is only 435 megabytes. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi OS with the desktop, it, it, it weighs on one gigabyte. The Raspberry Pi OS with the desktop and the recommended software, it weighs 2.5 gigabytes. So what is the difference between these two, you may ask? Here, this one comes with um, some programs um, suggested if you want to use the Raspberry Pi as a full computer. If you don't have any computer and you want to use this one, uh, I mean, if you want uh, if you want to use the Raspberry Pi as a full computer, you may you you want to choose this one because it already comes with uh, a word processor, a um, Excel-like program, etc. This one. It's, it's, which is the one that we're gonna use. It, it, it gonna comes with a few programs, but it's not going to be like uh, full of it. So if if we ever need a program, um, and we we're gonna we're gonna download some programs, you're gonna download you're gonna use this one, okay? Then download this one, and this is the one that we're gonna be using in this class. So let's do a checklist for the things that you have to, you need to have for this uh, first class. You need to have <clears throat> the image file downloaded. Um, this is in case, this is gonna be depending on the, on the method, but I suggest you to download it anyways. It's really good to have it. A unzip tool to take um, the, the image out of the zip file that is gonna come. The and then the flasher, <clears throat> which you're gonna use either Bal Balina Etcher or the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is a really uh, it's a new program from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This is the one that we're gonna use today. 
the Raspberry Pi imager, but you can use both. It's really simple. The, uh, one of the, I'm sorry, one of the process, uh, the process of using a image file on the Balena Etcher is also available to do on the Raspberry Pi imager. So let's start flashing the Raspberry Pi. So here. So here, this is the Raspberry Pi imager. Um, you may have a, a, an older one by the time you see this video. But yeah, this is where we choose the type of operating system that we have. If we had the image file, that image file or EMG file downloaded, you can, you can use, use custom and then you can select this one. I have this one because of the, um, uh, I had this one because of a project that I was doing and, and, the, and this is an image for, for using it with the 3D printer. I'm gonna choose this one, the Raspberry Pi OS 32 bits. And I'm gonna choose this. I have the SD card that comes with the Raspberry Pi connected uh, to my laptop, which is what I'm using right now. So I'm just gonna click right and it's um, gonna go. So yeah, this process takes a, a little bit. Um, first of all, it's gonna take all the files from the image and it's gonna um, unzip it and then it's gonna burn it into the, to the uh, flash, to, to the SD flash. Then it's gonna validate it and then we're gonna be able to use it. So let's wait a little bit for it.
So yeah, as you can see, it's taking uh, a lot of bed, right? Um, that I, I like to do this in the background whenever I want to, uh, before, before I need to start working on it, I usually put, the, put that in the background and then when it's finished, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. So yeah, after this writing part is going, is going to verify it, hopefully it, it goes well, and then we're gonna be uh, ready to, to keep, to keep uh, working with the Raspberry Pi. So let's wait a little bit more. Uh, so yeah. As you can see now, we're verifying um, the that everything went well, and yeah, this part is way faster, uh, so we should be able to finish this really, really quick. So yeah, um, we're just gonna wait here.
Okay, we are almost done. Everything uh, have you read? You can now remove the SD card from the reader. Okay, good, 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 good. So everything went well. So this is a really sp important part. Don't take the USB or the micro USB out or the SD card. Don't take it out of your computer yet. Make sure to do, to go to your computer. Um, wait. To go to your um, here to your files here um, to your PC. Okay, it's out. But make sure to be to 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 have it out of your computer first. In case it's, it's not out, you click right you right click it and then click eject. Okay, this is a really important part. I just take it out. I'm gonna put it back in. And it should be, and it should be displaying in a bit. Let's wait a bit, let's wait a second. For some reason, it's not recognizing it. Let me, let me see something. That can happen. Let's wait a second. So now we're gonna put the memory, the USB back in, or the or the SD card. And it should be appearing here. Yeah. So here, uh, it's something that we're gonna have and that we're gonna use in a bit. So let's stick to let, let's stick together for that. So the other option that you had was that using Balena Etcher, which is kind of the same you just click the select the image is gonna pop the window for you to select the dot image file select the drive that you're gonna choose the one that you just connect to the computer and then flash it's gonna do the same process it's gonna be burning very fine in case it, it, it goes wrong uh you do it again in case it, it doesn't it doesn't work maybe you need to um um wipe your sd card again or reformat it which is something that that you can uh, that that may happen. So I suggest you if, if you have that kind of trouble, I suggest you to look for it on the Hack at AU page for this course, which uh, we have in the class notes a couple of useful links for that. So yeah, if you need to form it, I suggest you to do it. Yeah, there's also an option in the Raspberry Pi Imager to do that. Let's let's here let's use this, this one. So you can see there's a way to form the card. And then flash the SD card with an imager. You can use the Raspberry Pi imager as we just use or use the Balena Etcher. Eject the memory from your computer, right? And then plug it in again. This is where we're gonna do a, a, the Wi-Fi configuration at an SSH config. Configuration is always first before using it. 
So connect the SD pack up in the computer. That's, that's what we just did. And for the SSH, we're gonna use, we're gonna right click and create a file named SSH. We're gonna close this. We're gonna go to boot. And here we're gonna create a file called, a text file called without anything yes no extensions so you notice that that i created a .txt file delete that just ssh the computer the raspberry pi once you pop this out and put put it in the raspberry pi this is going to recognize it as a permission to 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 get um connections through ssh from outside the raspberry pi which is what we're going to be using to talk to the Raspberry Pi in the next course, in the next class. Um, have this in mind. This is not something that you need to understand right now. The next class is gonna be better. It's gonna be uh, a little bit more detailed. For the Wi-Fi, so for the Wi-Fi, it's kind of the same. You need to go to here and edit. Uh, I, I, I put it edit, but you need to create as well. We're gonna use the same name here. WPA supplicant dot config configuration or conf. Yes. Then we click and then as you can see, this is the file example that comes um uh on your on your uh, for the um, Wi-Fi configuration file, be aware that this step is not is not the, the, the Wi-Fi configuration. You don't need to do it. Like it's not required. This is I'm showing you just a way to do it. So what 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 is required is to do the SSH. So have that in mind. The SSH you need to do it. The Wi-Fi you don't need to do it. So I'm just gonna type that part network ssid um let's use test as the 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 wi-fi network that i want wanted to go and psk is going to be the password so I'm just going to put here uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is just an example, right? I'm gonna save this and set. Okay, so you're gonna very important, don't take out the memory card. Just every every time, just eject it. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. And then should be good. There you go. So I'm just gonna take it out, and everything should be set to put on the Raspberry Pi. So now you're gonna go and boot up your Raspberry Pi, connect it to your um, to your monitor, connect the uh, the uh, the keyboard, the mouse, and then you're gonna connect the power. So. It should go it should look something like this once it goes on and you're gonna type you're gonna open a terminal that you're gonna look for at the top left corner as we saw and you're gonna type sudo apt update which is gonna download every update that it should be it, it, that it needs okay this process also takes a little while so you also do that and put it in the background and then you're gonna do a full upgrade which is gonna take everything that you downloaded and it's gonna uh, apply it and 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 it's gonna uh, upgrade every program that it has um, that is uh, all. So this is was the first class. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, any questions that you have, go to to the to the Hackaday U course page on the Hackaday IO page. Um, text me or email me uh, or talk to me in the public chat room for the Raspberry Pi course and 
see you on the next class. I will see you on the next class. This is going to be a really fun class. Uh, each class is going to be more fun. I promise you that. And I hope you learn with this uh, a lot with this with this class. Thank you.